it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, your organization has a three-tier web application deployed in the same network on Google Cloud Platform. Each tier, web, API, and database scales independently of the others. Network traffic should flow through the web to the API tier and then onto the database tier. Traffic should not flow between the web and the database tier. How should you configure the network? So there are a few key points in this. We've got a multi-tier application, web, API, and database are the three tiers. They're going to independently scale. We want the traffic to flow only in one particular direction and of course back the same way. Now if we draw a picture of this, essentially we have a group of scaling VMs all uh, serving the web, another group like that serving the APIs and another group serving the DB. So the traffic flow has to be from the outside internet through the web through the API and finally to the DB and then the same way back. What we do not want is to have any traffic flowing between the web tier and the database tier. With that understanding, let's look at each of the options. The first option is add each tier to a different subnetwork. So what this is recommending is that put all the web VMs in one subnet all the API VMs in another subnet and the database VMs in a third subnet. But that doesn't necessarily ensure that the traffic is flowing only from subnet 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. Subnets can talk to each other. So subnet 1 can also send traffic directly to subnet 3. Which means that this would not be a useful configuration for us. So just to go over it again, a subnet helps to group VMs together, which makes it easier to understand and manage. And I'm talking about when you have subnets, multiple subnets, say, within the same region itself. But a subnet by itself does not isolate the VMs. Because subnets can talk to each other, not just in this in one region, but in multiple regions, just having separate VMs does not keep them separate, keep the VMs within itself. And in this particular case, the traffic can flow from the web VMs to the DB VMs without going through the um, API VMs. And that definitely is not something we want. Therefore, we will eliminate option A. Option B suggests that we set up software-based firewalls on individual VMs. Now remember that this is a automatically scaling application. So you might have tens or hundreds of VMs that come and go. To have to configure individual firewalls on these VMs is just going to be too much of a task. Right? So the administrative burden or the overhead of managing all of that is going to be so large that this makes it an unviable option. So we'll eliminate option B also. Option C suggests that we add tags to each tier and set up routes to allow the desired traffic flow. Now, of course, a tier is just a logical concept. So when you say you're adding tags to a tier, you're essentially meaning you're adding a tag or multiple tags to all the VMs in that logical grouping that we have. Now, this is a good idea to tag each of the machines, right? So we can have tags that separate the web machines from the API machines from the DB machines, right? So when the machine comes up, we automatically assign a tag called web or API or DB, which allows us to group these machines or these VMs, even though they are potentially in the same subnet. So multiple VMs, same subnet, and yet you're able to distinguish and group them because you've got tags attached to each of them. 
However, routes by itself does not control the flow of traffic or to the extent that we want for this requirement. What do routes do? Routes say what is the next hop or what's the next destination for a packet that has reached this particular VM. Right? So it is defining where this network tra uh, traffic should travel next. Now, if you had multiple subnets and you did some extra work to ensure that the next route, only possible next route is that subnet that we want to allow it to go to. Then with considerable effort, you might be able to make this work. But even then, you can't ensure it works because then you, are, you have to ensure also that no other subnets is going to be added. If there was a fourth subnet added and you control the traffic flow among these um, subnets and by setting up the routes, if you add a fourth subnet, possibly, you know, traffic could travel via that. So it just becomes cumbersome to deal with and make happen. Also note that in this case, even though it took the hypothetical case of using subnets and routes, here we do not have subnets. So all we have is one subnet, multiple VMs, and we are trying to control the flow of traffic using routes. And that definitely is not possible. So just setting up routes will not control the flow of traffic in this particular case and therefore we eliminate option C also. Option D suggests add tags to each tier and set up firewall rules to allow the desired traffic flow. So as we said before, a tag is a very useful thing to use along with VMs to ensure that we are able to logically group them even if they are within the same subnet. So multiple VMs that come up could be tagged to say web if it's part of the uh, web scaling group and API if it's part of the API scaling group and DB is part of the DB scaling group. Which means that we now have a way to identify each of the VMs which does this particular task. Now that we have the VMs, we can then assign firewall rules on it to ensure that traffic flows only from certain places and only to certain places. Right? So this would be the source and the destination or the source and the target. So for the group of VMs in the um, which have the tag web, we, can, we want anybody in the world to be able to send traffic to it. The way we can designate that is by saying we'll put a, a, a source filter based on IP ranges and set the IP range to 0000 slash 0, which means anybody can send traffic to it. Okay, And where can that this particular tra traffic go? It can go to machines that have a tag called web. Right? So the target is based on tags and the particular tag that we want uh, this to be the target of will have the tag web. Similarly, for the other layers, we can also say that we are going to allow traffic based on tags. For the case of the API VMs, we will say that the source tags have to be web, which means that only traffic originating from VMs with a web tag is going to allow um, traffic going into the API VMs. And of course, we are saying here that the target is the API VMs. Similarly, for the DB, we are saying that the source tag has to be the middle layer, which is API, and the target has to be one of the DB machines. And of course, when you open it in one side, the reverse is automatically open too. And therefore, this gives us the best configuration. So to summarize that, tags help identify individual VMs of whichever type you choose, right? In this case, web, API, and DB. Once you have those tags and we have the ability to identify the machine, we can now specify rules, firewall rules based on the target tags. So by specifying the source target tag and the, uh, I'm sorry, the source tag and the target tag, we can define that this traffic will uh, flow only between VMs with these particular tags. 
And combining these, we get the desired traffic uh, requirement and we're able to restrict all of these. Therefore, D is a best option and we will choose that as a final answer. A couple of other things I could add uh, as a good practice would be that to have service accounts in these VMs talk to each other. Right? And you could also isolate these tiers by having separate subnets. Because you have tags, you don't have to do it, but then it might still give you additional control to have them in separate subnets also. In any case, for this particular question, the correct answer would be to have tags to identify the machine in each tier, the VMs in each tier, and then to set up firewall rules to allow the desired traffic flow. Well, how are you going to inform others of the super GCP content? Just one way, like it, share it, let them get to know of it, and you, you subscribe. <laughs>